So when you talk about um, ancient cultures, do you see some sort of outside influence, possibly some might say alien influence mm -hmm. on some of the ways that this energy might have been introduced in cultures? Or do you think it was a natural earth experience? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's no way to know. I mean, I, at this point, there's no way to know. I think mm -hmm. what we, we find people mm -hmm. who are sensitive, not mm -hmm. everyone, most people don't sense the energy very well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one in a hundred, one in ten, some people are pretty good at sensing these energies. So I think we could have learned about it on our own. And uh, my, my guess is that uh, at one time in the past, there may have been much more communi communication, knowledge of, among different areas of the world because the cultures, the, the structures are so similar. The technology is so similar in different places. So there might have been much more... Uh, a much more advanced culture, perhaps, in the past based on this energy mm -hmm. that we have no knowledge of or no historical proof of today. The only evidence we have are the structures themselves. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's, it's a real challenge for, for, um, for historians to explain why the similarity of structures in widely separated parts of the world. And, and, and coming back to present day, there's a lot of um, new new practices that are experiencing the old, if you will, or you're bringing in a lot of the ancient information and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, new kinds of healing modalities that are energy-based. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Reiki, we have body talk, mm -hmm. and matrix energetics. Mm -hmm. And matrix energetics, um, Richard Bartlett often talks about the heart being the center or the maker of mm -hmm. this consciousness and this alchemy between the consciousness and, and energy. Can mm -hmm. you talk more about how he's integrated your work into his work? Yeah, uh, it, it was kind of a revelation for me when I first heard about Richard's work. Um, I heard about it from a friend who's a healer, and um, he said, it's the funniest thing. I, I read one or two pages of his book, and I fall asleep. But then I wake up, and I know everything in the book. And he, he was giving me his take on what, what it, what it was all about, and it was very clear what he was saying, and I realized it connected to my own theory of of how um, subtle energy works, and how healing works, and how the life force works. Uh, in my first book, I have a little theory that basically leads to the idea that we have parallel universes, and we are in one, which to us is everything. It's solid, it's real, but if you could look at it at the microscopic level, at the very smallest scales, uh, I, I proposed that particles are undergoing little oscillations, little very tiny oscillations, and they can only see other particles when their velocities are aimed right at the other particle. So they have to kind of be lined up, their motions have to line up in a very precise way to have interaction. What that leads to is the idea that the particles that we call physical, we call real, are undergoing motion, so they all always kind of line up with near, nearby particles and interact. You can have many, many other particles that are not lining up in the same way. They're not synchronized in their motion with the first set. They will not be looking in the right direction at the right time. They'll feel no force on the average from the first set of particles. So it leads to the idea you can have many different systems of particles that are moving at different frequencies or in different phases that line up among themselves, but not line up with other sets of particles. That leads to this idea of parallel realities. Um, where, uh, So I, I, I gave the analogy of a stack of paper, where one sheet of paper is like our universe. If you're on this sheet of paper, your motions are synchronized at the very smallest scale, and that for you is the real universe. But if you could shift your frequency a little bit, you'd be on some other sheet of paper, which would look like a different reality to you, these can be present at the same time, but you won't see them because your frequency is different. Um, what I realized with Bartlett's um, method of healing is that it's very similar to that. Uh, we are on a reality, what we call reality, but if you want to heal something, um, it may involve a shift to a different parallel sheet of paper that... Um, may have not have that injury. If you have a broken bone in one reality, but in another reality, you have no broken bone. So it's like a shift from one to the other. Um, he talks about it in terms of quantum physics also. 
in quantum physics, we have the idea of, uh, of, a, of a wave function and many possibilities. We have many possible states, which is like many possible realities or many sheets of paper. And uh, in, the, in the quantum realm, uh, if you don't look, if you don't focus on the reality that you're in, then they are all kind of possible at the same time. And it seemed to me that what he was doing was going from the one sheet of paper, the reality that we're focusing on, the broken bone, going back to another, a broader state of reality where they're all, the different parallel realities are, are present. They're all possible. And which is also the shamanistic way of doing things. Um, he calls it, you do a two point and then you drop down, which is a way of saying, I stop focusing on my injury. I stop focusing on what I thought was real. And you go into a meditative altered state where everything is possible, where all possible realities are present. Then you shift back and you pick a different reality when you come back. It's called collapsing the wave function. You come back to a different, different sheet of paper in the stack. And um, if you look into uh, the literature of, uh, say, the, kahuna, the kahunas of Florida, of uh, Hawaii, the kahunas is a very ancient tradition in Hawaii. Uh, where These are the uh, medicine men, the, med the, the leaders there. Uh, they have a similar practice there um, where they will do instantaneous healing by going in this intermediate state where everything is possible, and then shifting. So um, um, Max Freedom Long spent many years in Hawaii and, and, and uh, studying these and many, many examples of things he observed with his own eyes. That in the, and this is what they take for granted. This is how they normally heal people. This is their, this is their standard medicine. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I relate to Bartlett to the shamanic healing. In, in Native American practices, Lakota people, other... Native Americans in America also use a similar type of shamanic practice where instantaneous healings can occur. So um, I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, Bartlett, as you know, has, wonder <laughs> has, has wonderful energy. Um, this is his symbol, which um, he, um, he, he discovered or created by his meditating and lying in bed uh, one morning, and this symbol kind of appeared uh, on his window, uh, about three or four feet wide, and he uh, had it drawn and uh, made into these little symbols for pendants and things like that. Uh, it's quite beautiful, but um, and when he teaches, um, it's so much fun the way he does this, you know. But it, it is magic in a sense, in a sense that um, they're doing things that don't correspond to the conventional physics, the, the known laws of conventional physics. But now we're living in a time where we're finding out that these parallel realities and things like subtle energy, the life force energy, really do make it possible to supersede those old laws and to go beyond them. That's where miracles come in. That's where sacred sites like Chamayo, the, the churches. Uh, you know, it's not just that someone arbitrarily decided to make some site sacred, and it's not tradition. There's a real energy there. Real things happen there. People do have what we call miracles. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, a, it's a, to me, it's an exciting time because it's, it's our science is broadening to include miracles to start to say, you know, it's a physics that we didn't know about before. It's a, it's a physics at a higher level, but these things do happen. Do you think that in 25 years, the definition of miracle will have have changed to something that happens every day rather than a random... I would, I would love that. I hope so. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I would hope that we all kind of learn how to do them because it's possible. Each one of us can learn how to use our consciousness and our intention to shape reality. So I hope we, we all do and we all learn to work together to do it in a positive way so we can help heal our planet and make it a better place to live. So is there anything else that you'd like to say about your book or contents of your book? Um, my, my book is a pretty comprehensive uh, description of energy medicine. It's probably the most comprehensive book that exists on energy medicine. It covers many different aspects of it, many different uh, 
It's called Life Force, the scientific basis, because I'm trying to pull together the scientific evidence. If you're an energy healer, you might like to be able to show your clients what is the evidence for these practices. They will often ask, how does that work? You know, how is that possible? And what I'm showing here is the latest scientific evidence for the mechanisms, for how it is that we're able to cause changes. 